Now we have Russell Morris here who's had a fabulous night tonight. Hi Russell. Hi, how are you? Very well. Now you've uh, played the real thing tonight. Uh, how many other people have uh, recorded the real thing? Uh, three others. Kylie Minogue, Midnight Oil and uh, Ollie Olsen in Third Eye. And how does it make you feel listening to those recordings? It's great, it's a great honour. I, I, I'm, I'm wrapped there because I like to hear how everyone interprets it because they all interpret it differently, so it's good. And do you know Ted? Yeah, Ted and I were joined at the hip when we were born, I think. I've known him for many, many years and uh, it's, uh, it's fabulous to see everyone turn out the way they have. It's just great. Fabulous. So you're doing a great job being here supporting him tonight. Oh, Thank yeah, you, Russell. So, so is everyone else. It's great. Have a fabulous night. Thank you. Now we have one of my favourite Rob Gurus here. I remember Sounds was my favourite show. It's Johnny Sutherland. Hello, Johnny. Oh, don't worry about this, guys. We'll be back. That's very nice. Very nice thing to say. I'm fine. Fabulous. It's a good night, isn't it? It's a fantastic night. Now, you've known Ted for quite a long time. What's your favourite memory? I remember Ted way, way back when he first came off the steamroller or the bulldozer and started to sing and had a, a hit single. And then he, uh, that was Julia, I do believe. Then he had Falling in Love Again. He was managed by uh, a fellow that went on to become Channel 10 newsreader, Dale Miles. But he had an agency as well. And at the end of 70 and 71, on Saturday mornings, we did the Sydney end of Happening 70, 71. We did a half hour together, myself and Dale. And that's when Ted was starting to break. So I got to know him from those really early days. He in fact lived Camden, Campbelltown way, and I was out around Liverpool way. So we sort of Westies and we're meeting up and we're in the business and we're loving each other. And we used to get out on the town and get, he got very drunk, they used to have to look after him. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes, he'll attest to this of course. Uh, and on some occasions we did some really outrageous things that I really can't tell you about here on this beautiful family television. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Love you your work, Donnie. Hey. You still got it, buddy. You're alleged. You're alleged, buddy. You can't tell us one... Lunatic. Lunatic. <laughs> you can't tell us one tiny, weeny thing that you used to get up to. Come on, there must be some fun times. I think some of the nicer things were the going out together and we had some really good nights out. Always with Ted it's like down to earth guy rolling their own cigarettes and, and loving a scotch or a beer and loving a chat. You know? So there were nice friendly warming things and I also remember shortly after, I think it was about 70, halfway through 70, into 71, he went to England, got a contract with a company over there and they changed his name uh, to do this big promotion. The name. I just can't bring back at the moment. Stephen Ryder? Steve Ryder, you've got it. I've got his job now. Good on you, darling. What a researcher. You want a job? <laughs> Steve Ryder, they called him. They sent him out on planes and jets and all this thing. And it just didn't fire. And he sort of I got a bit homesick for Australia again. And thought he could probably do better back here and decided to come back. That was uh, probably the first downtime he had had in his life, I think. Because it was all up to there. But when he got back, it wasn't long after the TMG came together and then off they went again. That turned out to be a blessing in disguise, didn't it? I remember too when he had to jump in my car. We put a car in the sound studio, a real sporty little thing, and uh, we sat there and did the interview and then he got up and played it. And it had only been big in Newcastle up to then. But then when, with the TV exposure of us and Countdown, it took off nationally. And the only reason we got him in was the fact that he'd gone to number one in the Newcastle chart. We figured, hey, this is a good song. He had no clip to it, so let's get him in the studio. And we went that way. I think they then got a clip to it. But yeah, that's another early memory of him, fond memory. Fantastic. So he obviously has a lot of support and still to this day. Oh yeah, he, he is one of the most loved people in the business. And if you ever get to see this, like if this comes out shortly, Teddy Boy is still one of the most loved people in the business. Stay that way. God love you. Thank you, Donnie. And you look fabulous. You look as great as ever. Have a good night. Do you want me to flex, mate? <laughs> hey, up here, Ted. Come on, man. Anyway, son. <laughs> That's the horniest camera I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, he's taking the red light off so you don't know if it's on or not. Oh, sneaky. Yeah, Look at this guy.
Yeah. 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 Yeah
a Ted story that's not naughty. No, I've got lots of Ted stories. Now, all I know about Ted, I mean, I don't know Ted uh, as well as a lot of other people, but for me, like, he's just the loveliest guy, you know. And, and you know, in excess of myself, just, we, we actually feel very privileged to be doing this tonight. You know, because it's just great being able to, you know, support somebody. And, I mean, um, yeah, see, for people for excess, I mean, see, Ted's one of the, one of the, he's one of the originals, you know. Like, I mean, like kids even before me, even before my generation. There you go. Now, I've been asking everybody outside, and, and nearly everybody said they wanted to see you, so that's obviously great. Now, I've noticed that you had a bit of a mess with all of your lyrics. Is that, is that true? Um, most of them, yeah, but, but not every song. I mean, Girls in the Avenue doesn't have a Now, I'm, more, I'm talking about more of the, the recent albums. Oh, done. yeah. Um, well, I guess, you know, I guess that's what I mainly do is, is um, sound a bit pretentious, you know, socio-political writing. So that's what I enjoy doing the most. I mean, I still write love songs, I still write a lot of, a lot of love songs, but, but um, I, I like, yeah, I do like to have some sort of, um, make, you know, make some sort of commentary and hope that I can, you know, make some constructive contribution. Change the world. Yeah. yeah. That's what rock stars are all about, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank you. Too. You've been Pleasure. sensational tonight. Thanks a lot. Wonderful night. Thank you. I am. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> Hello now to Tim Farris from In Excess. Hello, Tim. Good evening. <laughs> now, Tim, how do you know Ted? Well, I've known Ted for a lot of years. And, um, you know, like a lot of people here, uh, which is kind of like weird when you sort of say to them, like, come on, one man, I grew up in Sydney, and they go, I'm real. But really, at the end of the day, this, for me, tonight has been the epitome of like, the Australian the music industry get together. And it's, it, I'm just really, really proud to be a part of it. And Ted is, I've known Ted for a lot, for a lot of different reasons and, and some connections, not all musical, just as a guy, a friend. And uh, he's, he's truly one of the greatest gentlemen I've ever met. You know? and, uh, and uh, I'm just sending him a lot of positive messages. You're pretty good at that sort of thing. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, actually, speaking of positive messages, I hear you jumped out of a plane recently. What was that about? <laughs> no, it wasn't too positive. Um, was well, it for charity? I, yeah, it was for charity, for bed cottage for uh, children. But that was kind of like one of my biggest fears. Yes, you're right. You know, I'm scared of ladders. And, uh, and in fact, it's steps. Uh, you know, especially <laughs> falling up them, which I'm pretty good at. But, so you can do anything? Yeah, well, you know, actually it was one of the, one of the best things I ever did, actually. It was 14,000 feet. And, like, the clouds were, like, 4,000 feet away. So, and, I mean, it was really quite extraordinary. And, and I jumped with this new guy from New York, who was a six foot speaker. And uh, he did these somersaults and all that sort of stuff. And when we got to the cloud, I can still remember the clouds in my face. And then he pulled the chute, and I wasn't ready for that. And, and then we, like, did all these spins, and I suddenly didn't stop because of the sick audience. <laughs> And uh, it was great. I mean, sorry to go on. No, oh, fantastic. Kind of a mind blowing experience, actually. You have fearless, fearless Tim Ferriss. So thank you very oh, much, what, Tim. I was fearful when you opened the door. You saw me put my wig out. Well, you're not fearful here tonight, and it's um, very good to see you here. Thanks for what, Ted. Um, fabulous yeah. night. We'll talk to you Ted's later. Ted's a man. <laughs> and, um, so we have Tim Friedman now. Invited by Ted's longtime drummer Herman, who's an old friend of mine, to see a couple of Ted's early hits. And uh, I just came on stage after doing it, and uh, it was a bit emotional for me, and I sort of cracked up a bit. What? Why was that? Because uh, just before I went on stage, uh, Ted came up and introduced himself, and he does look well, and then he introduced me, and it was. Um, I don't know. I've had some band members, I've lost some band members in the past and Ted's went well and I know how Herman's feeling and it was just a big sort of whirlwind of emotion really and it was uh, hard. It's very hard. Well it's very good that you're here to support him. What song did you play? I did his first uh, solo with Julia and another one from before he had a gang when he just had a backing band which was called Falling in Love with Him. And, uh, and uh, what are you up to these days? Uh, 
jam is in between albums, so we're writing and all this year we're going to write and record and uh, we're going to release an album in February 2002. Who would have thought we'd all make it to 2002? Absolutely, you rock stars just keep going and going. Well, thank you very much, Tim. I wish you all the very best. Have a fantastic night tonight. Thank you, I now this is Mr. Kevin Borridge himself. Hello Kevin. Hi, I'm very well. I see you've changed out of your outfit. You look sensational. Did you like that? That was a Kamal hand-me-down. He <laughs> <laughs> said, bless you Kevin, take it and play that naughty rock and roll. You look much better, let me tell you where you are. <laughs> okay, now you started way back with, was it the Lani dance? Yeah, we came over from New Zealand in the, in the, in the late 60s. And uh, basically, you know, played around and uh, we had a record of Gunners to My Baby Tonight, which I wrote, and uh, did it on the airplane. And we uh, basically just did heaps of gigs when there were heaps of gigs and uh, people loved us. It was and, wonderful. And what about, was it The Happy Prince? Uh, that was the uh, one we did in 1969 called The Happy Prince, and it was uh, based on the Oscar Wilde story. I think it was before rock operas and stuff like that. And we, I think when that was released, we went to England to try and make our fortune. We saved up three grand, got on the plane, and went five guys, and we got there, bought a mini wine. Fabulous, what an artist. They're obviously a bit of a, a, bit of a poem as well, these yeah. lyrics. So, and, uh, and you know Ted, how, how did you first meet Ted? Uh, we met Ted um, basically from touring with um, Sherbert. He used, to, he used to top the bill and Ted would go on before then, we'd gone before Ted. So um, we went to a rock around Australia and um, played, even went to Tasmania. Got bust no good. <laughs> Everyone did. Yeah. They used to wait for the bands to come over and pounce on them. But so that's how I got to meet Ted. Oh. He's a wonderful character. He's a Fantastic. And so are you, Kevin. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night tonight. Thank you. I'd love to see you in that suit again. Yeah. <laughs> have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Now, here we have a, a favourite rock star of mine. This is Paul Christie. You know him from the Party Boys. But he went back a long time ago. What was the first band you were in, Paul? I was in actually called uh, Beat First. Okay. And Oh, there's a band called Les Ready. Okay, keep going, keep going. There's another one called The Ruptured Spleen. Okay, alright. Sounds, uh, sounds interesting. And with each band, what were you doing? Were you playing bass? I was playing bass. Yeah. yeah, okay, I still remember you playing bass. Yeah. Now, and when you were in Mondo Rock? Well, that was uh, after. Let me get this right. That was after Les Ready, but in the meantime, what had happened was Kevin Wright's drummer had seen me play. Asked me to audition for Kevin Morris' band. I couldn't hear myself think. Kevin plays very loud. So do I. But anyway, uh, and I got the gig and I said, oh, there's only one thing you're not going to like. It. I said, okay. We're moving to America in three years. I said, right, what's the address for the embassy? Well, it's going to be there. So I went to America, lived there, came back, and then lost our kids on Monday Rock. I moved to Melbourne. And uh, we had great success, that was a wonderful goal in Europe. And then I, uh, I did my stint with a couple of albums with the Mondays. James Rain and myself and Kevin formed a band called the Party Boys in 82. That was only having to do two gigs on two weekends at maybe Dick's in the Royal Beach. Ah. Your old stomping ground. Yes, yeah. I know Royal Beach, I know Royal So you've been... And, well, but it went on for like 11 years. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. you've been performing now for quite some time. Do you still get excited when you get on stage? I'm 55, I'm looking good. I believe you. <laughs> wow. Well, it's great to see you tonight. Are you actually going to get up and play? I'm not 55. <laughs> No, no. Actually, what I did, my part, my part in all this, hang on, I'll be there in a second. Uh, my part in all this was I actually uh, constructed some web technology for TED, where people can go and send wishes and make electronic donations. www.gimmeted.com. G-I-M-M-E-T-E-D. Gimme TED. Yeah. So that, and that's and this afternoon it was getting visited every 30 seconds. Fabulous. So lots, there, lots of lots of hits. It. Yeah, that's great. So people should, if you like, send Ted a message, get well, it's a good boy, he's a lovely guy. Thank you so much, nice to girl. see you. Oh, Have oh, a wonderful oh, oh. night. Look, we have uh, Ray Burgess with us now. Hi Ray, how are you? Very well, thank you. Now what are you doing here tonight? I'm here to help Ted. Um, Donnie and myself and Glenn and Molly uh, Just, 
watching in, you know, giving, giving them what we can. Okay, telling bad stories. Any bad stories you want to tell us? None that I can actually tell you to tell them. <laughs> I keep hearing that all night. Well, no. Well, we sort of stick together, you know, all these rotten bikes. Okay, now, didn't you used to pop out a show called Flashes? Yes, I did. I was very fortunate um, in uh, the days of Countdown and Flashes and Sounds. Um, I was lucky enough to do that for uh, about two years. So I got to meet uh, all of these fabulous people and work with them, and I sang as well as so I do with the album. And, um, it was just uh, a great time in my life. I really did. And did Ted appear on the show ever? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, they were all there. I mean, Ted was on one week and JB was on the next week and then Johnny was on. And they were all there. We all, so that's how we got to know each other, really. Um, and and uh, it was a big boys club. <laughs> so you're reliving uh, the 70s now, the 60s, 70s, oh, tonight. Absolutely awesome. I mean, um, I mean, Ross Wilson's on stage now and I'm missing it. And, uh, and uh, to see the Masters apprentices perform again and all that, oh, that, that was childhood dreams for me. It was just absolute fun uh, to be here on the same stage with all those guys. It's just great. And it's just awesome to see them all doing it for, for a good old mate. And he is he's one of the good, one of the good guys. And uh, that's what we're going to help. So, all for Teddy. And I've got to say, the people in the audience are unbelievable. You know, it's just, they're killing. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. You've a wonderful night. You're doing a great job. We'll I'll have a drink then. Whoa! Oh, Dad! Now, when you are a famous rock star like this, what? a famous rock star, you know what keeps happening tonight? They keep bumping into people, and it takes them so long to get away because they're catching up with all these favourite old friends. So, how is it for you two to see each other? Well, I remember your first gig. I know. Who was it? My with? first gig was supporting Billy Thorpe <laughs> at the Capitol Theatre. Yeah, he was at that stage. Yeah. <laughs> Go and sit over there. Okay. <laughs> Very <laughs> shitless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, long time. It's very hard to get together and talk about yeah. this, you know, off the cuff. We've all known each other for years, you know. We're all good friends. But you, you seem to be able to just, like, take off where you left off, obviously. Yeah, well, you know, 16 beers will do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, when you've known each other from a uh, period where we were all we were, we were, uh, younger, you know. Uh, you just, uh, it's like high school friends, or well, I'm sure you've got friends, but we're like, mates. You know, we, never, we don't know each other that well personally, but we've always had a good time. Well, I've seen him with his trousers down, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you didn't need to hear that. Changing in the dressing room. Changing in the dressing room. No, we just know each other. And, and Ted is a kind of all of that. Uh, it's a bit of sweet night here. You know, it's awful, it takes that to, to get this going. It's awful. What's, uh, I asked you before, Richard, but uh, what's your favourite memory of Ted? Apart from all the naughty ones, we know that. No, not the naughty one. No, my first recollection of Ted, I don't know about you, but it was, you know, it was all those hits he had. I reckon Ted's had the most hits out of the stadium. No, I was just going to say that jump in my car. Yeah, 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 honestly, rock and roll. <laughs> jump in Billy Thorpe, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Thorpe. I'll just get my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there you That's go. See? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's getting late in the night. We've got one very hot and sweaty John Paul Young here who's just been having a fabulous gig tonight. How are you, John? Oh, really good, really good. You look like you've uh, really been uh, working up a sweat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a great crowd. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, you go back a long way with Ted, don't you? Yeah, to the late 60s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was in his first band band. When we played the Frog of the Year, we were the same age, we sat together and finished up with the same record company. Where is that occasion that we're all together? Yeah, but, you know, we've got to keep thinking positive. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Very good. Now, did Ted write a song? Yes, yes, there was one, uh, what was it, um, uh, you drive me crazy, you wrote that. It was a, I think it was a hit in Tasmania. <laughs> so you didn't play it tonight? No, no, it was, there was probably three and four in the early days that didn't quite make it, you know, so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, it was, it well. <laughs> it was so good to hear you do Love Is In The Air. What was, did you actually remake the song because it could be more, how did that all come about? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, they, it was just a, um, uh, 
coach Baz Lerman, who was friends with Ted Albert, and uh, Ted gave him this CD with uh, all the Albert's hits on it and said, Take it with me. And, um, and he let me happily get it the morning, so we um, went in and read it the morning. Thanks to everybody out there for helping.